Um, so the first question is, how can I uh, give me please some advice on how to reduce anxiety and stress? Yes, uh, I see the question. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, how to reduce anxiety and stress. Right, I'm going to answer that question right away. The, you can uh, reduce your anxiety and uh, stress by uh, relaxing. And I said that many times that if you uh, practice meditation, uh, focus in your mind, on your, you may start every day. In the morning, you practice meditation and start the day with meditation. And during the daytime, you spend uh, at least Two minutes. I I used to say one minute in the past. I would like to increase it to two minutes every hour. That means whatever you are doing, you stop it and focus your mind on your breathing and take deep inhaling and deep exhaling. Do it for at least uh, uh, twenty times. 20 times, and then open your eyes and continue your work. During the time you focus your mind on your breathing and breathe, breathe in deeply, and you overcome already build up nervous tension. And tension increase and become eventually anxiety. And you keep building this uh, relaxed feeling every hour, every hour. This is not something very, something, this is not a joke. This is very serious advice. You have to put it into practice. So you uh, take it very seriously and uh, uh, practice every hour on the hour. Then you will see your uh, mind becoming relaxed. If you work for eight hours a day, towards the evening, you would have had 16 minutes meditation without any special effort. And that's how you have to do it. When you do it again and again, every day, not only one day, but every day, then one day you will see how much less stress you have, how much less anxiety you have. These are very practical things. And then during early in the morning, before you go to work, get up early morning and meditate at least for half an hour every day. And then you come home after your 16 minute meditation, come home, and then you are out of the evening, uh, shower or dinner or whatever, before you go to bed, meditate again for another 30 minutes, half an hour. And do this as a habit. Make it uh, uh, your second part of your life. And then you will see one day, your anxiety will no longer be there. You do it very good. It is a very good therapy. Mindfulness therapy, meditation therapy. Uh, okay. Uh, we have a couple of questions from last time that we didn't get a chance to address. <clears throat> uh, one of the questions was, uh, Dear Bante, I often find um, oftentimes I find my, myself, uh, okay, let me, um, sometimes the person is saying that sometimes they don't want to get angry towards another person. So they kind of uh, repress the anger. 
they don't um, let the anger take over and express it in words, but it seems that it accumulates. So they suppress it and the anger accumulates and then later on they explode at the person. They can no longer restrain the anger. Uh, what's your advice for this? When you're really angry, you don't say anything, it boils up and then you explode later on. You see, when you take care of anger as it arises then and there, uh, it will not build up. Anger will not build up. What build up will be patient. So uh, you have to do it very uh, sincerely that whenever anger arises, you have to think the disadvantage of anger, how painful it is, how it increases your blood pressure, how you cannot sleep well, uh, you may have even nightmares, and you may lose your friends, you may sometimes lose your job, sometimes you lose your family members. All these things are bad, unwholesome result, the danger of anger. And think of all these things, and then then eventually practice metta. These are all practical things. When you go through all these sort of therapeutic methods, therapeutic practice, then there is no room for the anger to build up. Rather, anger will gradually reduce. So I think I would uh, suggest you to do that uh, very seriously. But when you when we give instructions like this, perhaps at that time you think, oh, yes, it seems to be good. It, still, it seems to work. But you don't do put it into practice. No matter how much you say, if you simply appreciate at that time and forget about it, uh, you will not uh, ben benefit from that. In order to get benefit, in order to use them in your life, you must practice it. Keep practicing, practicing. Then, uh, you see, I'm telling this from my own personal experience. In When I was younger, I used to get angry. And I practice this over a long period of time. Slowly subsided, 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 and now I don't get angry. Occasionally, when I have uh, irritation uh, due to certain things, I waited, and uh, then even that irritation fades away. So, through the practice, constant practice, you can uh, overcome your uh, raging anger. Anger is a fire. You are burn, burning with anger. You all know the danger of getting angry all the time. So if I, I advise you very strongly to put them into practice. Take this very seriously. You may ask this question again and again. Each time you ask me the question, I give you the same answer. Okay, I gave you uh, the other day I gave a talk on uh, four kinds of people. Uh, some people's words are bad, deeds are good. Some people's deeds are bad, words are good. Some people both words and deeds are bad, but occasionally they are open to the Dhamma. And then somebody's word is good, deed is good, their mind is open all the time. These are the four kinds of people I mentioned the other day. And uh, if you remember that, go back to that memory, or go to uh, YouTube again, and uh, uh, refresh your memory. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. And the next question is um, asking about Anxiety and stress, which one, is it anger or greediness that brings anxiety and stress, or is it both? 
I think it's both uh, anger and greed. In other words, greed and hatred build up your stress uh, and your anxiety. Uh, because when you are overly greedy, you are always thinking of uh, getting something, getting something, getting something without any rest. Always you think of increasing your uh, whatever you want to wish, you want to get. And keep doing it over and over. Then without your knowledge, you build up anxiety or stress. Uh, also, if you get angry very often, then uh, as you as I mentioned earlier, then you lose all your status, all your reputation, all your friends, sometimes even your job, and lose your health. Uh, then, of course, uh, you build up your uh, stress. And therefore, both anger and uh, greed. Or greed and anger uh, help to increase your anxiety and stress. Thank you, Bante. We have another question from last time, and it's a clarification about the state of stream entry, Sotapanna. Uh, the person is asking, do we get there by doing wholesome karma? So could you please, to, to clarify this, could you please explain what's the basically the requirement that one person must achieve in order to attain stream entry, to, to remind uh, the people about this. So is good, doing good deed enough to attain stream entry? What more do you need besides just doing good deeds? I think doing good deed is a good thing, that's good. But at the same time, we have to develop our insight, wisdom to understand the very nature of your life. Uh, the, we have very strong attachment to self, very strong attachment to self. But when you see, so doing very good things is not going to reduce your attachment to self. Uh, but in addition to doing good things, you also, one more good, one, one better thing is meditation. Meditation is a good thing. Giving the honor, practicing morality, being friendly with others, serving society and so forth, are very good. On the top of all of them, you must practice meditation. When you practice meditation, you begin to see impermanence. You definitely see impermanence. When you see impermanence of everything, in everything you see impermanence, your body, your feeling, your perception, your thought, your consciousness, internally, externally, uh, in you, outside you, in everywhere, you see everything is marked with impermanence. That's called one of the three characteristics of existence. Existence means not something fixed and uh, static. Existence means continuous change, continuous rising and falling, continuous appearing and disappearing. Uh, most of the time we don't see that, but we experience it. With our eyes we cannot see that very often, very e easily, only gross part of impermanence we can see with our eyes. But we can hear impermanence in when we hear sounds. We can experience the smell. We can experience our taste. We can experience in our touch impermanence. In all this, where all these places we experience impermanence. When you say impermanence, what you call anicca, anicca, you can never find something permanent. When you don't find anything permanent, that is the time you get rid of your attachment to self. That is called the view, wrong view of self. 
that is called Sakkaya Dhiti. Sakkaya means five aggregates. Dhiti means wrong view. What is the wrong view? The aggregate such as body, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness. You think are impermanent. They are not impermanent. When you meditate, you see them changing all the time. Incessantly they change. They are impermanent, permanently impermanent. Permanently impermanent. And when you see this, your notion of permanent self will vanish. This is the first step of the attainment of stream entry. As the most important thing in this practice is the practice of Noble Light for Path. I repeatedly mentioned that when you practice Noble Light for Path and practice it, practice in practice, then you will be able to overcome your notion of permanent self. Every step of the Noble Light for Path leads to that realization. And then that is why I call Noble Light for Path uh, is the is the uh, karma destroying karma. Karma destroying karma. So the the beginning of that is the realization of not existing something permanent. Then get rid of sakai diti wrong view. Similarly, when you keep practicing uh, again noble light for path, you will see uh, unsatisfactoriness of everything that is impermanent. Everything in permanence is unsatisfactory. Then you will not have any doubt in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. And also when you practice Noble Eightfold Path, again and again and again, you will come to a moment that your attainment of liberation does not lie on practicing rituals. All rituals, uh, people practice thinking that they can attain liberation. That will never help you to attain liberation, uh, rites and rituals. So we learn to get rid of that. Only when you destroy these three, you attain the extreme entry path and fruition, gradually, step by step. So that is of course, in addition to all these things, in order to get encouragement, you have to listen to Dhamma, practice Dhamma, associate with good friends, and uh, uh, then you can uh, meditate, uh, then you can attain extremity one day. This is my short answer to your question. And there are Many more questions, let me answer some of them. Yes, the, the next question is actually um, about the sutta. So the person said they read the sutta that you went over yesterday, the Sangara Sutta, but oh. they also read the one before. So Metta Sahagata Sutta, the uh, sutta that's called Accompanied by Loving Kindness, I think. Yeah. And uh, they, the person has two questions about uh, this particular sutta. So the first one, they would like to understand what is meant by developing the fact, the enlightenment factors accompanied by metta, karuna, mudita, and upeka. What does this mean? And then I'll, I'll give you the second part of the question later. So what do they mean in this sutta? What does the Buddha mean when uh, he's saying developing the enlightenment factors accompanied by metta, karuna, mudita, and upeka? Yes, the based on metta, karuna, mudita, upeka, you can practice uh, the factors of enlightenment. That is metta, uh, sagata, uh, nijisa, uh, one practice, Vivekanistha, uh, Viraganistha, Niroganistha, Osaka Parinaming, Satsampa Janga Mahaveti. So when you practice Metta, uh, you can uh, you develop uh, 
विवेक निष्ठा विराग निष्ठा विवेक बेस्ट ऑन विवेक विवेक मीन्स काय विवेक चित्त विवेक उपरिवेक विवेक मीन्स सेक्लूशन फ्रॉम सेंशुअल प्रेशर काय विवेक सेक्लूशन फ्रॉम मेंटल हिंड्रेंस चित्त विवेक सेक्लूशन फ्रॉम क्लिंग क्रेविंग उपरि विवेक बेस्ड ऑन दिस सेक्लूशन विवेक निष्ठा विराग निश्चिता बेस्ड ऑन नॉन अटैचमेंट एंड नॉन क्लिंग राग मीन्स ग्रिसाय विराग निश्चित निरोध निश्चिता बेस्ड ऑन सेसेशन एंड वस्वग परिणामिंग दैट मीन्स दैट ऑल दिस प्रैक्टिस राइपन इन liberation was uh, all the base is it can be either metta or karuna buddha upekka one thing we have to remember when we practice metta other three also naturally develops when we develop metta other three also naturally develop for instance one who one who is full of metta will be very compassionate will appreciate others uh, achievement instead of becoming jealous and upekka when everything he sees uh, having the same characteristic there will be upekka uh, equanimity <coughs> and all these four develop together so when you want to develop when we develop all these things that is a, your that is a basis based on this you develop your uh, viva viveka viraga nirodha and these three uh, seclusion uh, viraga non clinging and viveka uh, and cessation that means once something ceases you don't try to revive it let it cease that's that's the basis and then your practice of that particular bhojanga sati vasag parinami ripen in liberation similarly other uh, factors of enlightenment as well okay The second part of the question is asking um what does it mean developing the enlightenment factors based on seclusion dispassion cessation and maturing in release Yeah when you practice it it comes to a fruition that means attaining liberation when you practice that is what they are called enlightenment factors for attainment of enlightenment uh, this becomes a, a support all these seven are the supporting factors for attaining enlightenment therefore they are called part or limb or hand bodhi anga bodhi anga bodhi means enlightenment anga means factors uh, it's uh, limbs uh parts and therefore when we practice these factors uh that uh, that uh, uh, those are the uh, supporting helping uh, factors for attainment and of enlightenment okay Yes. the the next question is uh, asking when one is subject subject to episodes of serious prolonged physical pain arising from a medical condition uh it's very easy to be overwhelmed by the pain to the exclusion of everything else and one is not able to see anything besides the pain what is your advice about how one can continue vipassana meditation in such a situation when the pain is so overwhelming you cannot concentrate on anything else actually that also is a good question 
when somebody is overwhelmed with pain, excruciating pain, it is uh, difficult to uh, meditate. Uh, I think there are people who sometimes uh, suffer from maybe cancer, uh, which is uh, very, very painful. And sometimes uh, I uh, I heard uh, people uh, suffering from cancer, they locate the place where cancer started and slowly, gradually develops. And then people who have been uh, practicing meditation every day, uh, in spite of this excruciating, overwhelming uh, pain, they focus the mind on the pain itself. I uh, heard somebody who had uh, cancer somewhere in his uh, uh, what do you call throat and when other people went to express their sympathy this person, the patient tried to console the visitors saying that my pain was so at such and such a place today, yesterday. Now it is moved to such and such a place. And he talks about that pain uh, to these people. While talking to them, that moment he experienced some kind of relief while talking to other people. And every day he did the same thing until he passed away. And uh, I went to see somebody two years ago. Uh, she was 81 years old, who had been our great supporter, one of my good friends when I was in Washington, very learned lady. And I went to see her with somebody two years ago. And she said she had she had uh, pancreatic cancer, which is incurable, and it keeps increasing. So she was almost in a hospice at home. So nurses visited her, and she was able to move around. But she was talking about with uh, uh, with delight with us without expressing. Uh, uh, pain. And then we, uh, after that I could not go, but somebody was there who reported to me. And until the last day, last year, uh, January 1st, year before last, she had the pain. It kept on increasing. She was a meditator. She was a meditator. And then uh, she was brought to hospital finally, and then first uh, of January last year, she passed away peacefully. Even though she had so much pain, she was able to talk about it, focus her mind on the pain, and use it as a subject of a meditation, what you call in Vedana Upasana, Meditation on feeling, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. In this case, she focused the mind on the unpleasant, painful feeling. And then uh, she passed away at the moment peacefully. Only the last moment, perhaps, she was given little morphine just to pass away peacefully. That's what I heard. So sometimes there are some rare occasions people handle it with uh, patience, 
talking, mindfulness, practice, uh, meditation. Okay, this is what I uh, know at least one case. There was another man in the uh, UNO, first secretary general, Uta. He also had cancer and he dealt with it uh, just like uh, as I explained before. And uh, and she passed, he passed away peacefully. There are certain very uh, courageous people who use their med meditation. Uh, there was uh, uh, another gentleman. Uh, she was he was a British. Uh, he became a, a Buddhist, and then he got Sugata Ananda. He adopted that name. He also passed away like that, uh, practicing meditation, talking about his pain, and uh, uh, passed away peacefully. So this sort of prayer occasions we hear, as most of the people cannot do that, generally. So that's what I suggest to encourage someone who may have pain. Okay, next question. Thank you, Bhante. Uh, the next question is asking about the feeling of metta. And so the person is saying the experience, like um, there's a physical sensation associating, associated with metta. How can I experience the pure feeling as metta? Well, uh, metta, of course, is a feeling. Metta feeling. Uh, that uh, becomes uh, uh, your predominant feeling, peaceful feeling, friendly feeling, and uh, that is uh, one of the uh, what do you call uh, feelings that. Uh, uh, Vendamal Ananda explained in Attaka Nagara Sutta uh, when somebody asked him to uh, give instructions on the practice, at least one of, one practice, he gave 11 of them. One of them is the practice of metta. It becomes very uh, peaceful practice, a peaceful attainment. Uh, so, it is the you one practices metta will have a very peaceful feeling. Uh, so you don't worry about that. Feeling is uh, uh, metta feeling. I would encourage you to practice and experience the mental peace. And that, and, and that uh, enhances through the uh, development, cultivation, multiplying, making it one's own, uh, like a vehicle, uh, as Buddha said in Metta and Sansa Sutta, Yani Kattaya, Vattu Kattaya, Anutrita, Parjita, Susamaraddha, like that. Uh, keep practicing it, then it becomes his own uh, main feeling, practice, uh, day and night. Uh, so one should not worry about the metta feeling uh, and physical feeling that, that results from the metta practice. It starts in the mind, but it pervades, it spreads uh, throughout the body and, and physically you feel it. I think uh, uh, yes, that I think is, should be the last question. The last question is asking about the, the rituals that you just mentioned when we talk about rites and rituals. What What is that? Okay, rituals are many. 
uh, <coughs> in the Buddha's time, there are there were people who were practicing various rituals, uh, like uh, behaving like uh, uh, animals. Uh, that called go vruta animals like behaving like uh, uh, and that means cows. Uh, there is a sutra in Madhuri Gaya called uh, uh, what do you call uh, what do you call and, um, it's about the dog and uh, the dog ascetic but uh, the, yeah ascetic yeah. ascetic yeah. Uh, may, what is the name of the discourse? Uh, 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 oh God, Kukuravatika. Uh, Kukuravatika. Yeah, the dog do that. Kukuravatika means uh, practicing uh, like a dog. Eating like dog, walking like dog, you know, urinating like dog, and so forth. That's a, that is water. And he had a friend who was practicing like a cow. Uh, so go over the, and so forth. These are kind of rituals, thinking that they would they can attain liberation by practicing them. And sometimes people uh, uh, try to. Uh, uh, practice, uh, uh, say, uh, bowing down, bowing down, hundred thousand times, bow down, bow down, bow down, uh, to uh, images, pagodas, trees, and so forth, thinking that that would help them to attain liberation. And sometimes they light a million lamps or over thousands of flowers and circumambulate something, uh, thinking that their mind, they, they, they do all these things with, with the intention of attaining liberation. They don't help you to attain liberation. You have to practice the Dhamma meditation very seriously. And uh, these are some of the examples of uh, rituals, and we call Raja Sila Water. Uh, Sila is uh, uh, what you call observances. Uh, water is uh, uh, practice of Vrata, like uh, behaving like behavior. Living like behaving like dog, behaving like a cow, behaving like animal, and certain animals. These are called uh, water, and they and becoming paramasa means clinging to them, attached to them. Uh, there are two words, both come from the same root, samasana and paramasana. Samarasana means reflection, Paramasana means attachment. So instead of uh, reflecting on the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha and so forth, they become attached to these rituals. And therefore, uh, one has to understand the fut futility, meaninglessness of them, and then give up. So friends, uh, you may, we, we may end this, and I hope uh, we can uh, go to metta practice, what do you call, end of this, and do some meditation. We have about uh, 20 minutes. Okay?
on it. <clears throat> Okay. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, Long, large, medium, short, subtle, or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life, to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness this is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures. One comes never again to birth in the womb. Okay, let us meditate now.
by means of this meritorious deed, may I never join with the foolish, may I join always with the wise, until the time and attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings ascend in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Friends, let me end this session with my regular metta wish. This actually comes from the heart, from the bottom of my heart. I sincerely mean what I say. May all those who are in hospitals, suffering from various diseases, taken care of by various compassionate doctors, nurses, hospital staff, may they recover very soon, return to their regular normal life, practice Dhamma, practice meditation, and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all the doctors, nurses, hospital staffs who take care of these people also find time to practice Dhamma, meditation, and liberate from samsaric suffering. I start with them because they are taking initiative to help people literally. And, and therefore I start my metta with them. And then those who have lost their loved ones and grieving, may they be free from grief and understand the nature of Dhamma and practice meditation and liberate themselves from samsari suffering. May all those who are all beings, human, animal, divine, snake, reptile, water in the northern direction be well, happy and peaceful. Similarly north eastern direction and eastern direction, southeastern direction, southern direction, southwestern direction, northwestern direction, northwestern direction, up upper direction, lower direction in the all those who are in these ten directions, be well, happy, and peaceful. May they find peace. May they find happiness. May they attain liberation from samsaric suffering. Thank you, friends. Now we end this session. Okay. And I hope to see you again next Saturday. Sadhu, 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 sadhu,